Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing a book review on At the Water's Edge by Sarah Gruen. It's New Year's Eve 1944 and socialites Ellis and Madeline Hyde have made a spectacle of themselves. They are abruptly cut off from their finances, plus they have to deal with the public shame over Ellis's inability to join the war. Seeking to get his father's favor again, Ellis wants to go to Scotland to capture footage of the Loch Ness Monster. Madeline reluctantly joins her husband and their friend across the Atlantic, where Madeline is put in a bit of culture shock once she arrives in Scotland, because Madeline has been privileged her entire life. She has to deal with air raids, no servants, and food rations. But through it all, Madeline starts to form relationships with some of the village women and she begins to see life differently and also starts to question everything she thought she knew about her own life. And even though her husband is looking for a monster, Madeline quickly finds out that monsters can be right in front of you. The first Sarah Gruen book that I read was A Water for Elephants, which I really loved and still adore to this day. So I was really excited to get my hands on At the Water's Edge, and wow, I freaking love this book, you guys. It's by no means like a perfect book. I mean, it does have some flaws and some issues, but still, my reading experience of this book was just so wonderful. I found the book utterly captivating, so I can't really even force myself to say anything really too negative about this book because I enjoyed it so much. I will say this though, the book does have a, a sort of slow pace to it. Things do kind of move slower. Um, it's definitely more of a, a character book uh, with, with some plot in there. Uh, it's definitely not like an action book by any means. The book definitely focuses more on character and plot and story and relationships. So yeah, if you're looking for like a really fast action paced book, you're not going to get it in this book. But despite it having a slower pace, I still flew through the pages of this book. And I found it incredibly hard to put down. I would, I would finish a chapter at night and then be like, no, I want to keep reading more and more. <laughs> so yeah, this book, for me, it just kind of had everything. It's, it's a historical fiction taking place kind of right at the end of World War II. It's spoiled rich people. Uh, you got the, the Loch Ness Monster. Is the Loch Ness Monster real? Is it imaginary? in such a, a vibrant set of characters. Some of these characters you will love, some of these characters you will hate, but they all serve a really great purpose in this story. But let me get this out of the way. Uh, like I said just a minute ago, this book is about spoiled rich people. If, if you're going to have a problem with that, you might not like this book. The, the main characters that you're introduced to at the start, uh, you have the leading protagonist, which is Madeline. You have her husband, Ellis. And then you have their friend, Hank. The three of them are spoiled, pampered. They've abruptly been cut off from their, their finances. Their finances coming from Ellis's father. So yeah, they arrive in Scotland with the intent and purpose of finding the Loch Ness Monster. Madeline really doesn't care one way or another. Madeline, she finds Scotland really dreary and disgusting. She doesn't like putting up with the, the air raids or the food rations. Sometimes she can't understand the native, native tongue of the Scottish people. So yeah, because Madeline is rich and spoiled at the start, of this book you may find her highly unlikable. Sometimes you can get very very frustrated and annoyed with her but I mean that's her character though. She's meant to start off very very annoying and frustrating because her character goes through this wonderful arc um, where, you know, once she does adapt to life in Scotland and once she befriends some of these, these women and, and learns about their life and just the war around them, yeah, Madeline 
starts to see things very differently. She starts to question who she is, the life she's been leading. Uh, she even starts to question her husband Ellis and whatnot. So, so yeah, she goes through this wonderful journey from start to finish. If you like that sort of book where a character does start off very unlikable but they go through this journey of self-discovery, this, this book might really appeal to you. Because I certainly, the very first couple pages of the book, I found myself going, oh my god, these people are so freaking annoying. I don't want to read about their lives. There's just a few times at the beginning I just kept rolling my eyes and saying, oh my god, these rich people, shut up. But you know what? That, that's how you're going to, to react at the very start of the book. So yeah, just got to get past that those first couple chapters because it, it starts getting really good. And this book has some wonderful wonderful themes to it. Uh, a lot of really great themes that by the end of the book you're really sitting and, and com contemplating and and uh, piecing together. Just some of those themes, I'll just go through and list some of them really quick that I have right here. Uh, ideas of friendship, self-discovery, inner strength, the beauty of life, uh, life's possibilities, real love, and who in fact is the real monster. And the monster theme is the theme that I really attached to, that I really gripped onto. You have the literal hunt for the Loch Ness Monster, and then you have all these other elements about monsters, people themselves being monsters, the monsters of your past. And then, like I said, this book, it takes place at the end of World War II. You have the war itself being a monster, which I just thought was brilliantly done in this book. If you can't already tell, I loved this book. I, I really would love to read it again right now. It's probably going to be one of my favorite books this year when I do my best of 2015. It, it's probably going to be number one. <laughs> I'm having trouble imagining anything else beating at the water's edge right now. But yeah, I, I totally recommend this book for people who love uh, character studies, people who like historical fiction. If you like Outlander by Diana Gabaldon, uh, I'm going to be bold here. I think you might really like this book too. Um, I don't know if it's just because this book takes place in Scotland, like like Outlander does, but there's just elements also of the, the love story going on in here that I think might appeal to fans of Outlander. So have you guys read At the Water's Edge? Do you plan on reading it in the future? Just let me know your thoughts down below. So that's it for this book review. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you liked this book review, you may like these other book reviews. Bye guys.